when they showed it to the British CEO, he said, I think the quote is, my God, it looks like a bloody phallus, which is hilarious. So uh, he thought the bike looked like a penis. <laughs> Hello, Dylan from Throttle Company here on a lovely Saturday. Maybe it's still morning, it's almost noon, I think. Anyway, we're open for business, of course, here at Throttle Company. We sell brand new Royal Enfields. We, those aren't our bikes, those are customer bikes. We sell vintage bikes. And I do a series called In the Loop, which you're watching right now. And today's victim is a 1966 BSA Thunderbolt which means it's a 65 or a 650 sorry they call it a 65 the series it's a 650 and a single carb I'm putting gas in it because maybe you saw that video on the Yamaha XS 650 that I did today same day but it'll probably come out a different time but I ran out of gas I think it was just a I'm dumb and didn't understand the petcock. But we're not taking any chances on this one. So I thought I'd fill it up with gas and give you a little bit of tour here. So we took this in on trade on a brand new Royal Enfield, if you can believe it or not. The guy owned it for over 30 years. And uh, I don't want to jinx anything, but it runs great. I put new tires on it, brand new. Uh, just some small little things here and there. Freshen it up. But uh, he painted it years and years ago, but you're basically looking at how it would have been in 66. It's got what they call a monoblock carburetor, so the bowl is sideways. Not my favorite. We'll do a little bit of tickling, which is pushing that plunger down, which intentionally brings a little too much gas. Here's the key to turn it on and off, and it's kick only, no turn signals. 66 as well before they would have done turn signals. Hopefully we don't interrupt these guys talking, but uh, let's give it a start. Now it's on the center stand, it has a side stand, it leans a lot on the side stand. So I'm gonna knock it off and then this center stand has a tendency to kind of drag. So I'm gonna make sure I kick it up all the way, there it is. So we only have a speedometer, we don't have a tack on this model. This is more of the base model with a single carb. They have a Lightning, which is a twin carb. And uh, it also has a speedometer. We have one of those for sale as well. This one is for sale. Sometimes I do my bike, sometimes I do customer bikes. This one is my bike, but it's for sale. So we got right side shift. I'm shifting with my right foot, clutch is the same. I've done a couple of videos on right side shift bikes so far. Brakes are just drums, front and rear. Um, I drove a, that XS60 is a very similar bike, so I have to keep reminding myself about the brakes being on the or the brakes being on the left and the shifting being on the right. But this thing sure does run great. Uh, kick only, you kind of get a little bit of uh, you know you want it to be reliable because I don't want to be sitting here if it dies in traffic, I'll have to uh, try to kick it and try to get it back in neutral and everything. So that can be a pain in the butt. And uh, but this thing runs. Really great, really good so far. Um, BSA, uh, I'll give you a little bit of background on that. BSA stands for Birmingham, England, small arms. Uh, just like the Royal Enfields that we sell, a lot of companies, oh, now I'm shifting backwards. A lot of companies did guns. Royal Enfield slogan is made like a gun. There's a famous Enfield rifle. So Birmingham small arms, small arms meaning small guns, uh, as in like the kind a soldier would carry, not like a cannon, that kind of thing. Um, but that's what they did. If you've seen Peaky Blinders, which everyone keeps telling me to watch and I haven't actually seen, but I've heard they all work for BSA. So they're in England and they work, they're trying to get jobs at the Birmingham small arms factory. I don't even know if they do motorcycles at that point, but anyway, 
there's a lot of similarities. So you have piston fitting snugly into a cylinder that makes the motorcycle run, and that's a very similar machining process to make that as you would make a gun. So that's why that there's a lot of companies that would do both or have done both in history. It's a very old company, BSA. I actually don't know how old, but obviously they were around during uh, war times in England, so we're talking World War One and Two, and that's when they switched to making guns, switched back to motorcycles and peace times. They were huge in the 60s, so kind of mid 60s. BSA is the number one motorcycle brand in the world, and then they're out of business by 73. And the way that I always remember that is BSA and Triumph combined at the end. And there's a really cool motorcycle, I'm gonna put a photo of it up here, called the Triumph Hurricane. And what's significant about that is it was developed as a BSA. So it was based on the BSA Rocket 3 with a crazy bodywork that, now I have to put the picture up there to show you, very close to me. Um, I don't have a mirror, so I'm just turning around and looking at these cars all come within a foot of me. Um, anyway, the BSA Rocket 3 engine, so it's a triple, 750, uh, and it has this is body work that was made by this famous fiberglass guy, Craig Vetter, an American. And when they showed it to, he was developing the designs of it, when they showed it to the British CEO, he said, I think the quote is, my God, it looks like a bloody phallus, which is hilarious. So uh, he thought the bike looked like a penis. And anyway, I remember that motorcycle. We have the, we in, Columbus, we're in my shops in Columbus, Ohio, that's where I am right now. I grew up in Pickerington, which is just a couple miles east of here. Basically a suburb. And they have the AMA Hall of Fame Museum. Uh, we're so lucky to have that right there. But anyway, they have an original BSA Hurricane prototype that says BSA all over. It's bright orange and yellow like the original, or like the ones that came out and they have it right next to a production one. And there's some interesting differences. But anyway, that helps me remember because obviously they went out of business in 73 because they went out of business before they could release that motorcycle, the Hurricane. Well, anyway, people blame Japanese bikes, basically. And, and they're probably right. Uh, the British bikes, they just, they leak oil. They have kick only. They're a lot more raw, a lot more unrefined. Um, and that was what the Japanese bikes were. And it turns out that's what people wanted. So they wanted to push a button and go. They wanted turn signals. They wanted uh, something that didn't fill their garage with oil. Speaking of turn signals, there's a car right on my butt. And I've got to signal. That's tough. It's a lot to do. It's a funny dance with both feet, both hands. And trying to do your hand signals on a motorcycle. Sometimes I appreciate the turn signals. This bike, you're just out there. It's got great turning radius. It's got one of those uh, British, all the British bikes seem to have this where you steer the amp meter flying around, <laughs> saying who knows God knows what. I guess it's more on the positive side, so we're gonna consider the fact that we have positive amps happening, which is good, it means our bike is charging. That's um, obviously an issue, and they put it right up front and center. The brakes are 60s drum brakes. That tells you how good they perform. Um, they slow you down. That's about all you can say about them in a positive way. But you don't buy this bike for the brakes. There's the famous Steve McQueen. He rode Triumphs, which is a very similar bike to this. And uh, I don't know if this is real. There's a lot of silliness around Steve McQueen and motorcycles. But they said, how were the brakes? And he said, no, no, never touch them. So that is <laughs> just, they're there if you need them. But, uh, don't count on them. <laughs> so you use your engine braking to slow down a little bit and uh, they're not for that. So <laughs> that's what it's like. I'm trying to give you that impression in the um, in the loop videos. What's it like to ride a 1966 BSA? And it's a raw experience. Uh, it's not, if you've only ridden new motorcycles, this is gonna be a total shock to your system. For, but as far as bridges, Vintage bikes and vintage British bikes. Here. This thing's fantastic. I was mentioning the speedometer. It doesn't work. I'll have to look at that. that but uh, who knows how fast we're going? It feels fast, that's for sure. On a motorcycle like this, when you're 
just out there and the steering's not the best, the brakes are crazy, it, it bounces and vibrates, I feel like I'm going 100. I bet I'm going more like 45. It's just the reality of it. But you don't have to go fast to get the feeling, so that's nice to sort of, uh, you know, get your best bang for the buck. Speaking of bang for the buck, this bike, I think we have it priced at 4750 That's insane. That's honestly totally crazy. Everyone in the shop is talking about just buying it for that price. Uh, it, for a running, you're seeing me on this motorcycle riding down the road, VSA, uh, for $47.50? That's crazy, that's insane. And the reality is, um, we bought, we traded, the guy traded in two motorcycles, and the other one sold for more than we expected. So we really don't, don't need to make any money off this, so. It's a fantastic deal. I don't know if anyone's watching it. It's funny because when I first started making these YouTube videos, I thought, there's just no way. These are just to get, they're not for this. Honestly, I'm not trying to sell this motorcycle. It'd be nice for sure, I guess, but I'm just trying to show you what it's like and, and try to create a bit of a community around vintage motorcycles, show you you're not alone, you have questions you wanna ask. If you used to own one of these and you can't ride it anymore or you don't have it or it doesn't run, hopefully this is an inspiration or, you know, a nostalgia trip, whatever, you get to see what it's like or see someone ride it and say, oh yeah, mine, uh, oh, it was harder to kick or, oh, those turn signals or whatever it is. I remember shifting on the right, that kind of thing. And uh, that's what it's for. But we have sold a couple of these. I know the CBX, the TR6C, maybe a couple other ones. And I did a, <laughs> I did a video on a customer's bike and he told me that someone bought it or wanted to buy it because of the video. <laughs> I thought that's hilarious, but it happens. I mean, you never know with the internet. That's sort of my slogan with the internet and business. Is you just never know who's watching one of these and says, I know that's a good deal. If you know anything about BSAs, BSAs are a little bit less priced, I don't know why, than Triumphs. I mean, obviously they're more rare. And uh, $47.50 for a running $6.50, that's insane, that's crazy. Uh, that sh it should be twice that. If this was a Triumph TR6, which is basically Triumph's equivalent of that, a 650 single car, it would be 8,000 easy. It, uh, if it, was, it depends on the condition and all that stuff, but yeah, 8,000 is a fair price for that. This is only 47.50, so it's a good deal. If you're looking around and you're thinking, uh, I only care about Triumphs because I know them from the uh, stuff that they're still doing, you know, Triumph came back and they make great motorcycles today. BSA. There's all kinds of rumors about them coming back. But anyway, if you know, uh, if you only know Triumph, check out BSA. They're very similar. Uh, the engines are a little bit smoother. They kind of look maybe plainer, but also maybe just classier. More of an Art Deco look to the engine cases. They have an interesting style where on a Triumph, the engine case, you take that off, you're inside the engine. On a BSA, they kind of have two layers. So they have the outer case that is not oil tight. And then you, uh, or not, there's not oil behind it, and then you pull off that case, and you can do some things, change, adjust the clutch, timing, things like that, and then another level in is when you'll actually start to lose oil. So, it's kind of a cool design. It winds up like, making it look like a very smooth, like I said, Art Deco kind of look to it. Simple, simple bikes to work on. Uh, there's, some, there's a bit of a learning curve, like if you've never owned a British bike, they do things differently. They have a positive uh, earth, so ground is positive, so the battery terminals are completely opposite of what you're probably used to. Um, just goofy little quirks here and there. The only way to turn it off is the key, which is way down there, sort of unsafe. Some of them, they put a kill switch on there, but um, <laughs> so they're kind of raw and crazy. But they're easy bikes to work on and fun bikes to own. When people bring these bikes in and have us work on them, they're like, this bike hasn't run in 30 years. Do you think you can get a run it's going to be hard? I said, no problem. And they're always shocked. And I say, there's just nothing to it. There's just, there's just not a lot to this motorcycle. And that's what's nice about it. It's sort of pure, just the basics of motorcycling. Am I in gear? Oh, nice. I found neutral. So anyway, that's, that's been an in-loop video. It kind of felt like a quick one for me, maybe because the last one I ran out of gas and it was twice as long. But uh here is an amazing running, maybe the idle's a slightly a bit high and I'll just adjust that on the carburetor when I can reach it. But uh, amazing running BSA that we have for sale in our shop, Throttle Company Vintage Motorcycles uh, here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, if you like these videos or you wanna see me ride more vintage bikes, just subscribe to our channel. If you like this video, 
please give it a like. Uh, and thanks very much. I will see you next time.